we're talking about the different types of compressors uh, mainly found on an automotive AC system. Uh, you have piston compressors and you have two categories of those. You have fixed displacement and variable displacement. Also scroll compressors and rotary vane compressors. And we're going to talk about how the compressor functions in the AC system. Your compressor is a pump. You have refrigerant coming in, pressurizing it, pushing it back out of the system. Your oil actually moves with the refrigerant. Using the right amount of oil and the right type of oil is very important. Some systems now only have four to five ounces of oil where normally you would have six to eight ounces of oil. This type of system, an overcharge can cause catastrophic damage to the compressor, a super high pressure in the system, and repeat failures. Always check the manufacturer specifications for oil amounts. Um, you don't wanna just grab a bottle of oil and just dump it right into a brand new compressor without knowing how much is in the system and how much the system requires. You also want to be careful with hybrid compressors. They have a specific kind of oil that is non-conductive. If you use standard oil in it, you could damage the components. The most common type of automotive AC compressor is the piston compressor. You have a fixed displacement and a variable displacement compressor. On a fixed displacement is a swash plate that's connected to pistons that are gonna move back and forth you can't vary the angle of this swash plate, so you get the same travel all the time. On a variable displacement compressor, you can actually change the angle of the plate, which changes the stroke of the pistons, and you can vary the output of the compressor based on the needs of the system. On some piston compressors, you're gonna have a standard clutch set up. Uh, you're gonna have two wires when you put power to it, you're actually going to engage the clutch and start turning the insides of the compressor. On a variable displacement compressor, you actually don't have a clutch. You only have a pulley. Now, it's connected directly to the shaft inside the compressor. What you have on the back is a switch that's actually going to vary the angle of the plate inside the compressor, which is going to change the displacement of the compressor based on the needs of the system. Another type of AC compressor is the scroll compressor. You find these on Hondas and some Fords from the early 2000s had these as well. You have a fixed rotor and an orbital scroll. When the clutch turns, you actually turn the orbital scroll. It will oscillate inside of the fixed scroll and pushes the refrigerant towards the center and out of the discharge port. On a rotary vane compressor, you find these on some Mazdas in the early 2000s, mid 2000s. The clutch is connected to a shaft that holds a rotor that has three vanes. The vanes are in slots inside the rotor, and as the rotor spins, the vanes will come out and cause compression on the inside cylinder of the compressor. Now to handle this properly, you have to have the correct pressure in the system. If you have a restriction in any of the lines or any of the major components of the system, you're going to cause high head pressure, which is going to damage the compressor. Condenser is one of the most important components to making sure that your compressor is running properly. If you don't have good airflow over the condenser, then you're going to have high head pressure, which is going to damage the compressor. You're going to have premature failures. If you have debris, any kind of pieces of metal or anything like that in the condenser, they can't be flushed and what you're doing you're causing a high pressure issue again and so you're just going to have to change the condenser. You want to make sure you don't have any leaks. If you have a leak, you can't move your oil through the system because your oil actually moves with the refrigerant. Using the right amount of oil and the right type of oil is very important. Some systems now only have four to five ounces of oil where normally you would have six to eight ounces of oil. So you just gotta make sure that you have the right type and amount of oil in your system. 